In April 1912, newspapers around the world were full of the tragic story of one of the most famous ships in history, the Titanic. At the time, the Titanic was the largest passenger ship in the world. She was nearly 270 meters long and over 53 meters high, with nine decks. She was owned by the White Star Line. The Titanic left the port of Southampton, on the south coast of England, on the 10th of April 1912. She stopped briefly at Cherbourg, in France, and Queenstown, now called Cove, in Ireland, and then started her journey across the Atlantic towards her final destination, New York. She was carrying 1,343 passengers and 885 crew members. The trip to New York was her maiden voyage. Some passengers in first class were rich and famous, but most second and third class passengers weren't rich. They were people from across Europe travelling to America to start new lives. The story of the Titanic is so famous that everyone knows how the voyage ended. Just before midnight, on Sunday the 14th of April, as she was sailing towards the coast of North America, the ship hit an iceberg and was badly damaged. Two hours, 40 minutes later, the ship sank. Tragically, there weren't enough lifeboats, and only 710 people survived. In 1985, the wreck of the Titanic was finally found at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, two and a half miles down. A hundred years after the Titanic sank, people are still fascinated by its story. But while there are hundreds of books, television programs and famous films about the ship's short voyage, many people still know very little about where the ship came from and the people who built it. The birthplace of the Titanic is Belfast. Belfast is the capital city of Northern Ireland in the United Kingdom and the city was famous for shipbuilding in the 20th century. The Harland and Wolfe shipyard, where they built Titanic, still exists today. You can see the dock where they finished the ship. They don't make ships here anymore, but you can still see the yard's two massive cranes, Samson and Goliath, from all across the city. Today, the old shipbuilding area of Belfast is called the Titanic Quarter. There's a lot of new development in this area. And there's a huge new Titanic signature building at the old shipyard where you can learn more about the ship. From the outside, this amazing new building looks like the bow of the Titanic. And behind the new building, you can still see the old offices of Harland and Wolf, where they designed the ships for the White Star Line. This building is empty today, but in 1900, there were hundreds of people working here. 
and around 15,000 people working in the shipyards. The Titanic was the second of three ships that Harland and Wolff were building for the White Star Line in the early 20th century. The plans for the Titanic and its sister ship, the Olympic, were almost identical, both inside and out. But the Titanic was slightly bigger. The designers marked the Titanic's differences in red on the ship's plans. You can see these original plans at the Ulster Museum of Folk and Transport's Titanica exhibition in Belfast. You can also see a lot of the objects from the Olympic. The Titanic had identical items on board when she sank. At the exhibition, you can also learn much more about the people who built the ship and the people who were travelling on her when she sank. And this is just one of many Titanic exhibitions around the world. The tragedy of the Titanic was very difficult for the people of Belfast. And for many years, no one in Belfast talked about how they built the Titanic. But this changed over time, and today, people in the city are proud of their family histories. There's a memorial to the men of Belfast who died on the ship outside the city hall. And tour guide Susie Miller has her own very special family story. I can remember, as a small child, my grandmother taking me to see the Titanic Memorial, which stands in the grounds of Belfast City Hall. And she pointed up at, at the name Thomas Miller on the plinth and told me that that was my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather worked here in Harland and Wolfe in the shipyard which built Titanic and he had helped to construct the engines for Titanic and its sister Olympic. And Tommy Miller has a special place in the history of the Titanic. He's unique, he's the only one of the crew who worked on the construction of Titanic for Harland and Wolfe and then worked for White Star as one of the crew. Like many people on the ship, Tommy was leaving Ireland to start a new life in America. Before my great-grandfather left Belfast, he said his goodbyes to his two sons, and he gave each of them two new pennies, dated 1912, and he told them not to spend those coins until the family was all together again. Sadly, Tommy was one of the crew members who died, but his family never forgot him. My grandfather kept those two pennies all of his life and he passed them down through the family and we still have them in the family today. But why is the story of the Titanic still so famous after a hundred years? Susie Miller thinks that there are two reasons that people will always be interested in the Titanic. You've got the biggest ship in the world with the richest people in the world and the poorest people in the world sailing across the Atlantic and on the maiden voyage it hits this iceberg and it's a disaster. And within that bigger story there are all these little threads of stories, individual stories about families and people and people who were heroes and people who were cowards and people who were villains. So you've got all those elements within it. So I think those two things combined give you a really good story.